So, so as you can see, because of this zigzagging, uh, this zigzagging nature of of the steepest descent method actually is is the main reason why it, it, it uh, for it, uh, for it to be slow, and it will and it will be slow when the condition number condition number is is large. So what we can we can now think of is okay. I we need a method as I mentioned in the previous lecture. We need a method that uh, that 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 takes into account. That sim doesn't simply follow the steepest descent, but rather takes into account also how this direction itself is going to change, right? So it must take into account not only the the gradient, which which tells you the direction of the decrease of the function, but also how that gradient itself is going to change, which is uh, and uh, now that the way the gradient itself is changing is captured by the curvature of the function, or in other words, the Hessian of the function. Right. So, if we have a method, uh, so the a better method would be one that that takes in that that knows at this point itself that although this is the direction of steepest descent, I should not actually be going here because this is not really a sustainable uh, will not give me a sustainable decrease. I would have to again change my direction and go in the in a in another direction, etc. So, what we would need is ideally a, a method that kind of that is when while you are sitting here itself identifies looking at the curvature and all this other information identifies a better direction to move in ok. And that is what is uh, that is the that method is uh, is what is is basically Newton's method. So, that is Newton's method. So the the uh, it's again a uh, it's again a uh, method uh, like before, but now we are going to take the what we are going to do is take a Newton step. So p Newton at time k at at iteration k is defined in this way. It's defined as the Hessian of at x k. It's defined as the Hessian of x uh, of the function at x k inverse gradient at x k. Now the now here's one one important uh, important thing to note. See the Hessian itself may not be a uh, it may not be positive definite. Okay, so Hessian need not be positive definite, and in that case the the Newton uh, the Newton step or the Newton di uh, direction may not actually give you descent ok. So, the Newton direction may not be a descent direction may not be a descent direction if 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 this is not positive definite right so as a consequence a lot of what we discussed uh, so far doesn't actually directly hold for the, for newton's method meaning that we are we are not uh, necessarily decreasing at every step uh, with the newton's method we are, we are we are we may not even be getting descent we may in fact be getting ascent we may be increasing the objective value right so 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 uh, the the uh, uh, the 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 so when when applying newton's method we have to be careful that we are actually we have although the the method is intelligent in the sense that it makes takes into account the curvature of the function we have to make we have to make sure that the that the that we are in fact getting descent right so okay so let us So let us now uh, discuss the rate of convergence of this of of the Newton method. 
Now, one one other thing I want you to note here is in the in the Newton method is that the Newton step is itself has has baked in it already the step size. The step size has been chose has already found has already been found for you by taking uh, taking into account the curvature uh, of the function through the Hessian. So it uh, one doesn't usually need in addition to this another step size uh, because uh, the Newton step is 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 a complete step meaning that it's not just a direction. It's a complete it's a it's a complete step to a to the new to the next iteration, right? Okay, so here is the theorem. So suppose f is twice continuously differentiable and the Hessian at x is Lipschitz continuous in in a neighborhood of x star at which the sufficient conditions of optimality are satisfied. Now, what does this mean? Sufficient conditions of optimality are satisfied. It means that uh, it is a point at which gradient is equal to 0 and the Hessian is positive definite. Okay. So, that means uh, the sufficient conditions of optimality are satisfied and consider the iteration. So, let me write this for you in the bracket. Uh, so, the gradient at x star is equal to 0 and the, the Hessian at x star is positive definite. Consider the iteration x k plus 1 equals x k plus p n k, where p n k is as, as, as defined above. Then, if the starting point x 0 is sufficiently close to x star, then x k converges to x star, and the iterates converge to x star. Moreover, x k converges to x star quadratically. That means, if you look at the error between x k and x star, that error decreases to 0 quadratically. And third, if you look at the norm of the gradients, this norm of the gradients, this also converges to 0 quadratically. So, here is, so let us take a note of a few things. 
So, I mentioned to you uh, look at let us let us see what the theorem is saying that the if f is twice differentiable continuously differentiable and the Hessian is Lipschitz continuous in the neighborhood of x star at which the sufficient conditions of optimality are satisfied that means, it is a local that means, it is a local minimum of your uh, of your function f and you look at this uh, this iteration which is x k plus 1 equals x k plus p n uh, p n k where you are taking a, a Newton step. Now, if x now here is the here is the main thing if x 0 is sufficiently close to x star then you are guaranteed that this will converge to x star. That means, if you are sufficiently close what does this mean if you are in uh, in the neighborhood of x star means around the uh, around you are in a in a part in a part uh, in a part around uh, of the space around x star where the function f looks convex. See if the functions the function may very well do other things elsewhere, but around x you are close enough to x star. So, at x star the function has a, has a gradient equal to 0 and Hessian positive definite. So, in that in a neighborhood around x star the function is actually convex and what this is saying is that you are starting your iteration uh, in that sort of neighborhood. You are starting your iteration in a region where the function is convex. If the function is convex then in that case if you look at the Newton Newton direction the Newton direction in that case that means, if, if, if the Hessian then if the function is convex then the Hessian actually is positive definite right. If the Hessian is positive definite this is actually a dis then a descent direction and then uh, so, so, so if you start your iterations in this sort of region then then you, uh, the Newton direction is a descent gives you a descent direction ok. So, and so what does this theorem say that if you start your iteration somewhere close enough then the iterates converge to x star moreover they converge quadratically and even your gradient vanishes quadratically the norm of the gradients also vanish quadratically. So, if you are uh, so, if you start your iteration somewhere uh, in this sort of region then uh, then the Newton method not only converges it converges quadratically it converges faster than the steepest descent method. So, the uh, the 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 uh, the, the, pro, the 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 main thing here is that because the Newton direction is not guaranteed to be a direction of descent we have to include this rider that you are you are starting in this kind of basin of attraction where where the where the function is actually uh, in in a neighborhood of the of the true minimum where you are the function is convex now if the function actually is convex everywhere then then things become easier and then this sufficiently close really is has no has, has no has no, uh, no bearing on the uh, on the final on the final result but the main thing to note here is how we've got now quadratic convergence as opposed to linear convergence, uh, which is what uh, which is what steepest descent was giving us. Now, now, uh, so we can we can also do other variants of of a new of the Newton method. So we one can do, for example, one can do instead of taking uh, so in uh, in situations where the hessian is not positive definite ok uh, one can do one can come up with variants that of of a new of the newton method that that tend to mimic the behavior of the newton method so for example uh, you could do simply pk equals some minus bk inverse gradient of f at xk where bk is symmetric and positive definite right. So, C B k is symmetric and positive definite. So, this kind of it uh, iterate is what is called a quasi Newton method quasi Newton method. Now, what this tends to do is it brings you a little bit of information about the curvature as alongside uh, and also gives you uh, the properties of of guaranteed descent. Now, the the way the b k is obtained is through the past derivatives and past information that you have obtained about the function and so there are um, uh, uh, th there are many different ways of of um, of updating this b k one of the uh, 
uh, one of the one of the sort of most popular updates is what is called the BFGS update. So, we do not have the time to go into all uh, details along all this. The BFGS up, uh, gives you a, a met update, it gives you a way of updating um, method for it is a method for updating. updating b k. Now, uh, what sort of uh, uh, what sort of result can we get for this kind of a uh, all right. So, now we uh, having uh, so, so now uh, with this I think there is uh, this gives us this gives us a wide gamut of 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 methods for solving unconstrained optimization problems. So, from here now we will move on to constrained optimizations.